Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. I've got these on to cover the bags under my eyes. It is early. It is early. I am pre-recording this at around about 6 a.m. I'm heading up to uh, the Lake District today, Grasmere to be specific. If any of you are up there, come say hello. And here with, look, we want to talk this morning about the big news that came out last night regarding Leicester, Leicester City. And they've managed, they've, uh, listen, Kasabian FC have done it. Fair play to them. They've managed to avoid a points deduction, a six point uh, deduction, which was supposed to be uh, sort of enacted this season. We'd heard last season that Leicester had breached a mass amount of uh, financial fair play rules, according to uh, multiple organisations. And it feels like at this moment in time, you well, as Leeds fans were thinking, bloody hell, well, at least justice is going to be served uh, by those, uh, by the powers that be. And, and that hasn't happened. And obviously that is because Leicester City have managed to win their appeal. And I think that's relevant to discuss, to be quite honest with you, because obviously it was such a massive thing last year between Leeds and Leicester. Leeds stuck within the uh, the realms and we stuck within the the merits of the game and, 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 the, uh, and the brackets of what to spend and, and what not to spend. And Leicester City uh, hadn't done that. And that is essentially why, uh, in our opinions anyway, points should have been deducted. Leeds United were very, very careful with what they were spending. Leicester didn't feel like they were. Uh, but it turns out this season um, that the points deduction has been sort of null and void and Leicester City have won the PSR appeal. Now, how has that happened specifically? Well, it's, it's quite staggering how the Premier League rules are set up right now is that Leicester were able to change their accounting period one month out. So I believe they changed it um, from, it was it was either June to, to May, I think it was, it was January, February, March, April, May. Yeah, it was May to June, uh, which meant that they were in their bracket and they were able to get out of said problem. Um, they appealed and look, if they've done it like that, which presumably Leicester have fair play to them, They've uh, they've they've wiggled the rules. They've they've uh, wrangled their way around it and and listened to to the letter of the law. They're not wrong. I mean, is there a conversation about how the how the rules are set up? Definitely. And um, but yeah, within that period of time, Leicester have got away with it. So so I guess fair play to them if it's all if it's all correct. But yeah, changing your accounting period uh, to a month out has, has has managed to get them off that six point deduction and inevitable fine. But they will still be um, they will still be vulnerable when it comes to a three year accountancy period accountancy period, I should say, which is definitely something to keep an eye on. Um, and everyone, I wanted to speak today about Leeds United's uh, quick start to the season as well and the players that we should look out for and potential movements within the squad and what I think that we're going to see going forward now with, with Mr. Farker and who he's going to be selecting. The midfield now, as we've seen and as we were speaking about last night, Leeds are building up in a certain way. Leeds are building up in a certain formation now. It feels like a little bit of a 3-1-6 and I think now, and I think Burnley, there will be this change um, where Altenacker, for me, will be coming in for a lie grave. Why Connor? Why Connor? Why Connor? Well, I think Leeds are going to be extremely strong in this build up. We've seen it in pre season and we've seen it you know, when we've been attacking um, this season as well when it's come to, you know, essentially just having really a back four, but three in build up, that one just in front, and having six players run forward, including. The two fullbacks who are involved in that as well. Leeds obviously have to be careful on the transition. They have to be careful on the counter attack. But I think Altenaka is going to give Leeds a real different sort of angle. And and let me describe why. I think I think as as we know with the Grave, I have no problem with the Grave, but maybe he's a little bit more defensively minded, a little bit more of a combative midfielder, of which you need in every side, of course you do. And I think he could be an influential member of this squad going forward, a hundred percent. I think Al Tanaka still gives you that tenacity, still gives you that physicality and that combativeness. If you've seen Tanaka play before, obviously we've spoke on the channel about him coming in for about eighteen months now, so we are well of uh, we are well aware of Al, uh, but he definitely does give you that. And I think even in the brief cameo that you saw at the weekend, you still did see him getting involved in these sort of defensive displays. There was a couple of times of which the ball was nicked from Leeds United and Al Tanaka's fitness, his stamina, which is a, a huge hallmark, a dual hallmark of his game was ever present and I know he, he only came on for a, for a set period of time but you can already tell in his game that is, a, that is a large part of it, the fitness, the stamina, the ability to get up and down the pitch, almost box to box 
in a certain way, but Leeds could so, they could change it in so many ways. Now, there's so many options. You could even just have an, an entire midfield double pivot slash cam. You could have Joe Rothwell at the base alongside Ethan Ampadu and Tanaka in that number 10. I feel his guile, his innovativeness, his creativity, his balance on the ball, his low centre of gravity, his ability to feign where he's going and then go the other way. I genuinely believe at this level, at this level relative, is going to be absolutely elite. And I think he could comes in for Gruev for Burnley for me because I think we'll go to win the game. I think Gruev naturally will give you that stability and you might not be able to build up as sort of a six with Gruev in there because he might be a little bit tentative at getting forward. That's down to managerial instruction, but also it is down to the player. He judges how he goes during a match as well. It's not just down to the manager. You go here at this point and you go there at this point as well. He's got to really make his own judgments on where to be and where not to be. And I genuinely believe when you look at Al Tanaka's game, he's going to be the man who's going to come in, infiltrate, but also be part of that defensive unit, which is going to, you know, sort of protect Leeds from that counter-attack, um, you know, uh, as, as part of a Dusseldorf midfield, he was sort of notorious. If you read some of their forums, if you read some of their articles on Al Tanaka, he was absolutely notorious for, for not only being an, at uh, an attacking player, but, but being a very, very effective defensive player as well. So for me... When you get when we get back on the 14th of September against Burnley, you're going to get Al Tanaka coming in. And I think it's going to be as quick as that. And I then wonder whether or not Alaya Grubb is going to be able to get back in because I think Tanaka is that is that is that sort of uh, player in the midfield who is going to dictate a lot when it comes to the tempo. And I think he gives you so much variation as well. The interesting part is going to be that number 10. It's going to be who then goes in there. Obviously, Peru's given himself a shout, hasn't he, over the weekend with that fantastic little finish. And I thought he had a really good cameo as well. Brendan Aronson, who's had a really, really good start to the season. But also, you know, you've got you've got different variants in there when it comes to Willie Nonso. Willie Nonso in there has uh, just, for me, has been a uh, starlet so far. But I, I do wonder, there's variance as well. If you want to keep Grev in there, is there potential? Then maybe that leads go to a, back, a, a midfield three and stick Tanaka in there. Or is there a potential, as I've mentioned, for Tanaka to move into that number 10 role or advanced eight role, if you want to call him that? Or call it that, I should say. That was, you know, the, the, the hybrid there, in a sense. And uh, we see something a little bit different there. But it's really exciting, guys. We've got so many options. Manor Solomon's another one that I wanted to talk about and does... He just keep that left side now, or is it going to be Ramazani? We know for Almeria, a guy who played pretty much every single game for Almeria in La Liga, or was a massive presence and part of it last season. He played off that left, scored against Real Madrid, of course. But Leeds now have that at their disposal. If they're able to keep everybody fit and firing, then Leeds should have an excellent chance of of, of really getting a, getting to grips of that top two very very quickly. Um, as I've said, you know, I, I, I look at this the table and I think there's some standouts. We spoke about that yesterday, but standouts not like standouts in as in Leicester, Southampton, and Ipswich, or well, probably Leicester and Ipswich at the start of last season. Um, you know, no real firepower like that. But Sunderland, listen, uh, they've got four wins out of four. Could they be the surprise team this season? Of course they could. They've got all the ingredients. But have they? But have they? Have they got the depth? Have they got the age and wisdom required, aside from Brown, to really take all the championship season? It's never been done before, in my opinion, with a team that youthful, that exuberant. I think you've got to have a mix. I think you've got to have the blend. I think Leeds have got everything going forward to win this division. I genuinely believe that. I'm saying that wholeheartedly. So, yeah, um, shout out to Leicester, who look have got away with it. Um, but it looks like it's proof. looks like there's a bit of proof in the pudding there. So, fair play to them. Mad how these PSR rules are, 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 are stretched out. I want to know what you guys would do with the side. I was asked last night, Connor, would you go and get a number 10? Would you go and get a number 10? Do Leeds still need a number 10 in January? Because I still believe when we're in the green with monetary, monetary value and all this sort of stuff with capital, I still believe maybe Leeds are going to be looking out, looking, looking at that option in January. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, everybody. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.